Hello, this is Sunil Sundaraj with Jersey Sporting News. Uh, today, I'm happy to be speaking with Nate Millen, the head coach of the Muhlenberg College Diggin' Mules football team. Once again, Coach Millen, thank you so much uh, for taking time out to speak today. And, uh, you know, congrats, you know, to you and the rest of the team on an outstanding start to the 2023 season. Thanks for having us. Uh, good start to the season for sure. We've got a long ways to go. We're about halfway through the season. Uh, and as only... Uh, a handful of undefeated teams left in the country. So we're happy to be uh, one of those and uh, hopefully uh, continue on that path uh, throughout the rest of the season here. We got a long ways to go, but certainly uh, whenever you're off to a good start, it feels really good. Yeah, no, I agree 100%, Coach. Uh, offense, defense clicking on all cylinders. Offense, I think, has scored 148 points. The defense only has yielded 59 points. You're ranked in two polls, the American Football Coaches Association, the D3Football.com, have dominated in all four games. Just talk about how, I mean, everything so far panning out for you, you know, said here uh, perfectly, Coach. I don't I don't know if it's perfectly. Uh, <laughs> a classic, I'll give you a classic yeah. football coach answer. Yeah. Uh, but we seem to be improving uh, in yeah. all three phases. Uh, yeah. Our players are a little bit older uh, than we were a year ago. We return a lot mm -hmm. of players uh, on both sides of the football, uh, specifically on our offense and defensive lines. Uh, mm -hmm. And those players took a, a big step up in the off season. Uh, and then obviously uh, we're, we're starting to see uh, the fruits of their labor this off season. Uh, so we're yeah. continuing to improve. We still have uh, a very, very long way to go uh, here. Uh, but uh, again, so far, so good. Uh, and and we, we are on pace to to try to accomplish all of our goals. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's terrific to hear. Um, hey, I, I had the pleasure of speaking with two out of your four captains, junior quarterback Joe Rapetti, you know, uh, senior offensive tackle Zach Greenberg. You also have senior linebacker Tyler Ekstrom uh, and then senior safety John Lohr. Uh, just you, know, you talked about that experience factor, uh, uh, Coach. I think uh, I said that's really, you know, kicks into high gear, you know, just in terms of uh, on the field, on and off the field as well. Can you just describe that? Yeah, our captains have done a wonderful job. All of them are uh, multi-year starters. And I know you talked to uh, Joe and Zach this week. Mm -hmm. uh, and Johnny Lohr uh, is no stranger uh, from Northern Valley Old Japan. Yes. Uh, and so we've got a great group uh, of, of guys there. Uh, and uh, obviously Tyler Ekstrom from Connecticut. Um, and, and all of these players have played, uh, except for Joe, on special teams uh, as well for us. So you've got a good mix of guys who are older. Uh, they're good leaders. They're from really good programs. And, and we think that translates. Uh, here at the college level. Um, we say it all the time uh, when I go around to clinics and things like that. Um, well, we say winners win um, and mm -hmm. put your players in a position uh, where they're going to compete against one another. Uh, and you're going to find the players that that just somehow find a way to win. Um, and, and those are the players that that continue on and, and continue to get better. Uh, and so finding players like Johnny uh, from OT, which has obviously been super successful, um, and uh, Joe from Ocean City has obviously been super successful. Uh, and Zach from Livingston uh, was a young man who had some some higher level looks uh, and ended up at Muhlenberg. And so we're super excited uh, for him uh, here. Yeah, that's great. Um, you said uh, preparing here for McDaniel at home uh, uh, tomorrow and then the next two games away at Gettysburg and Dickinson before returning home on October 28th against John Hopkins. So definitely, you said, uh, uh, a, a tough schedule, but uh, talk about uh, what what were the expectations heading into the season, and what what have you seen so far? And as you said, it's early on, so I, I you know you really can't probably gauge you know said uh, just in terms of the team right now. But what were you you know sensing you know heading into this year? You know, I mean, how good this team could be and how far they could go as well, Coach. Yeah, we've prided ourselves these last few years uh, on getting better each and every single week. Uh, mm -hmm. I think our ceiling is very high. I felt that way for the past few years. Um, we've won a postseason game five consecutive seasons. In 2018, we made the Elite Eight. 2019, the Final Four. 2021, we made the Elite Eight. Um, and so our ceiling has been very high at Muhlenberg. Uh, and then our expectations are as well. Uh, nobody rises to low expectations, uh, mm -hmm. as we like to say around here. Uh, we sink to the level of our training. So we practice really hard. Uh, we have high expectations for ourselves, for our coaches, for our players. 
Um, and that's been set for a number of years, not just in the past three or four years. Um, it's been a, a decade or more at Muhlenberg uh, with seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 wins. Um, mm -hmm. And so our players, um, I think as important as anything, uh, they believe that we can accomplish anything. Uh, and then more importantly, uh, they work towards accomplishing anything. We'll see how good we are uh, at the end of the season, um, but we're going to work to be the, the best possible team that we can be. Uh, we think that is um, really, really high. Um, uh, and again, once you get into late in the season or, or the playoffs or bowl games, you're playing really good teams. Uh, and so anything can kind of happen in college football. Uh, but we're going to work as hard as we can to be the best possible team this team can be. Yeah, it's fantastic to hear. Um, I, an emotional start to this uh, 2023 season, uh, Coach Mill, uh, paying you know tribute to former uh, Millenberg uh, uh, college football head coach Mike Donnelly. It said uh, there was a bone registry marrow drive, and then the unveiling of a plaque at Scotty Wood Stadium, and it's uh, you know again uh, very poignant. You know it's located at the southeast corner of the stadium, at the top of the ramp leading from the football team's locker room to the field. Uh, just talk about Coach Donnelly, his impact. You know, it said you know Nolly with the football team with Muhlenberg uh, College in total. Yeah, Coach Donnelly worked here for over 20 years uh, and left a lasting impact. Uh, that's the wonderful thing about higher education. Uh, people tend to stay. These are great jobs. Uh, I'm very mm -hmm. fortunate to be the head football coach at Muhlenberg, just as Coach Donnelly was. Uh, and you're in a position to hopefully, along with the faculty and the staff here at Muhlenberg or, or any place in higher education, to really work with tremendous students. Um, and so Coach Donnelly's impact, it's still going today. As you mentioned, we work with the Andy Talley Bone Marrow Foundation. Uh, and each and every year we do a drive in his honor. We've had a handful mm -hmm. of players selected uh, to hopefully help save somebody's life. Uh, and that was something that uh, Coach Donnelly uh, wanted to do and his family wanted to do. Uh, it was great to have so many alumni back and former players back and former coaches back. Uh, and it gives you a, a sense of appreciation. Uh, this program is not just about the players that are here currently uh, or the coaches that are here currently. We owe a debt of gratitude to those players uh, and those alumni that were here and those coaches that were here to build this program. Uh, and, and I say to everybody, uh, when we're talking to our recruits, when we're talking to our players, when we're talking to our alumni, I tell them this is your program. Um, I'm here uh, representing Muhlenberg College. Uh, we're going to try to do the best we can. Uh, but if we want it to be a championship caliber program, uh, we need alumni to support us. We need parents to support us. We need players to work really hard. Um, it's their name on the jersey. It's their name on the degree. Uh, and so we try to have them take ownership of this. Uh, and again, Coach Donnelly uh, was was just instrumental uh, in building the program and setting the expectations here. Um, and so it was just uh, awesome uh, for, for us to uh, uh, kind of have a small token uh, of our appreciation uh, for him. Yeah, it's it's wonderful to hear. Um, I you know wanted to ask you about you know uh, and just pivoting you know to uh, in terms of the recruiting. You talked about I mean, I and when we talked a couple of years ago, it's all over. It's Pennsylvania, it's Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Maryland, and Virginia. But then this year's team, if I counted forty players, I think on the team from New Jersey, and then you talked to the experience fifty upperclassmen. But just talk about that. I mean, that, you know, New Jersey becoming, you know, said a real hotbed. I mean, the fact that North, you know, Central, South, East, West, it doesn't matter. But, you know, kids, you know, are definitely, you know, as said, attracted and they, they, they want to come to Muhlenberg College. You know, there there's, you know, in terms of, as you said, you've built that culture, that winning culture there. And, you know, again, it's it's on the field, but it's off the field as well. You know, being a student athlete as well here, uh, Coach Mill. Yeah, I think uh, it's a couple of things. Uh, number one, we're really fortunate to have great football here in the Lehigh Valley in Pennsylvania. Um, mm -hmm. uh, however, part of going to college is experiencing things on your own. And yeah. so some of the local players, and we've had great local players, some of them just think Muhlenberg is too close. Um, and, and they end up wanting that, that experience on their own. And so I think then you look at New Jersey uh, and we are close enough. Uh, again, from Metro New York, we're an hour and a half. 
from South Jersey, we're less than two hours. Uh, and from Central Jersey, uh, again, I can get to uh, I can get to Monmouth in about an hour and twenty minutes on a good day. And mm -hmm. so for those students, we're far enough away to where they get that uh, independent experience. Um, mm -hmm. So where we see some local players go elsewhere, um, we see those New Jersey athletes say some of the schools in New Jersey or New York or, or Westchester, uh, they're just too close to home and they want something a little bit further away. Uh, and we happen to be an hour and a half or two hours away uh, and that's good for them. Uh, and so I think we're fortunate where our location is um, and we're fortunate that there's so much talent in New Jersey um, and, and that we have built a good program and that we do have great academic standards, that, that this is a product that people and families are interested in, uh, not only on the field, but off the field. So I think it's, um, I think it's a combination uh, of a lot of things. And then, mm -hmm. as you know, uh, you have success. Uh, we had a great run of, of players from Ramapo uh, and yeah. parents talk and, and another parent talks and, hey, my son's having a great experience there and you should have your son take a look at it. Um, and so we've worked hard uh, at having our players have really good expect or good experiences here. Uh, again, we've traveled abroad. Uh, we've played in the playoffs. Um, we've taken a plane trip to play the number one team in the country down to Texas. Uh, and we feel like we're doing things that other programs aren't, uh, again, to make us more attractive to some of those elite level players. Yeah, uh, that's tremendous to hear. Um, as you know, it takes a village, uh, said coach, you know, to uh, to be a winner. And I, I don't you know, want to forget about your coaching staff. Um, can you talk about what they've you know meant to you just in terms of that, you know, game preparation in game, you know, said the X's and O's. I mean, there's so much that goes into it, you know, in, you know, preparing for, you know, week in and out. So I just wanted to ask you about that. I know there are a bunch of guys and some of them have been able to connect with, uh, but, you know, just a couple of guys, you know, I said uh, Corey David, the defensive coordinator and uh, Nick Oliana, defensive line, Trey Brown, special teams coordinator. Uh, Jerry Stramera, uh, wide receivers coach, uh, Maurice Stallings, running backs coach, uh, Jaden Davis, Greg French, who's the recruiting coordinator, Jacob Woods, and Zach uh, Delton. So I said uh, a number of people there. It's just uh, uh, all with, you know, I said vast amount of experience. But can you just talk about, you know, again, their contributions, you know, to the football uh, team? For sure. We've got a wonderful staff, uh, again, led by our defensive coordinator, Corey David. Uh, he's been with us now. Uh, this is season five uh, with us here uh, at Muhlenberg uh, and very fortunate to have him. Uh, he and I were good friends. We actually lived together uh, starting our careers okay. off uh, at SUNY Cortland, where he was a fantastic mm -hmm. football player. Um, and he runs our defense. And, and when I say that um, with everything in mind, he is the head football coach of our defense. Um, I, I don't have to talk to them about anything. He's self-motivated. He gets our players motivated. He's organized with our coaching staff. Um, and again, as I'm on the offensive side of the ball, to have somebody with his experience, to have somebody with his professionalism, uh, mm -hmm. it really makes uh, my job a lot easier. So when you say it takes a village, uh, that's absolutely couldn't be more, more truthful uh, on the defensive mm -hmm. side of the ball uh, with him. And then the same thing is true uh, with our special teams. Uh, coach Trey Brown has been a head coach in Division Three. Uh, he's internally motivated. Um, and done a wonderful job in our kick phase. He has uh, some colleagues and contacts at the Division One level, so his professional development is off the charts. Uh, when he brings things to the table, it's well thought out, uh, and we know that he's going to be able to teach it in a manner uh, that our players are going to be successful with it um, as well. So to have those two guys on staff along with our other guys, uh, it's been a huge, huge uh, blessing for us. Uh, and, and they are a, a huge, huge part of our success. I, again, I tell everybody we've got uh, essentially three head coaches. My, mine is the title, uh, but I kind of run the offense. Uh, Coach David runs the defense, and Coach Brown runs the special teams. We're, we're super yeah. fortunate uh, to have them be with us. Yeah, it's fabulous to hear. Um, and then just uh, switching up, uh, you know, of course, the support for the administration athletic department as well is crucial. Uh, uh, Coach Millen, you know, Director of Athletics, Lynn Tubman, Associate uh, Athletic Director, uh, Megan Petrino, and President Kathleen E. Herring. Just talk about that. I mean, again, in terms of having that backing, you know, said from them uh, for the football team. It really does. Uh, it's extremely important. Uh, this The football program, I tell everybody, is kind of a microcosm of the college as a whole. 
Uh, our program has so many alumni uh, that we need to work hand in hand uh, with the uh, development office uh, on our campus to do fundraising and outreach events. Um, <laughs> see, hopefully you can edit yeah. that out. So no, sorry. Um, <laughs> okay. So we work hand in hand with our development office. Uh, and then we recruit so many student athletes. We work hand in hand with the admissions office. Um, and so to have uh, a president like President Herring support us uh, and understand uh, that we're part of the mission of the college here to educate our student athletes uh, is tremendous. Uh, Lynn uh, and Megan have been great. Uh, Megan's son is here on campus. So they're a Muhlenberg family through and through. Uh, and Lynn has been so supportive of our football program uh, as well um, in a lot of different ways, whether it is staffing, uh, whether it is um, support services for our student athletes, uh, professional development with our coaches, uh, alumni outreach. Um, and so she's done a, a wonderful, wonderful job here uh, as the athletic director uh, here at Millenburg College. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's great to hear. And, uh, you know, I, I think another difference maker coaches facilities, you know, I said uh, in terms of I me mean, look at Scotty Wood Stadium, but then strength and conditioning. And just, I mean, there, there's so many other mitigating factors that really play, again, an essential role in terms of, you know, bringing, you know, drawing those uh, athletes, you know, to Muhlenberg College. Uh, can you just, you know, speak to that as well? For sure. Number one, we've got a great strength coach in Darren Thomas. As we mentioned, our coaching staff and our support staff, um, the, the weight room is the uh, the heart and soul uh, of any culture in any football program. Uh, mm -hmm. and so DT does a great job uh, with our athletes in there. And we feel like we've got a great weight room. Uh, it's a place that our athletic department has invested in. It's not just for football. It's for all of our athletes and many of the mm -hmm. students on campus uh, as well. So it's a worthy investment. We've expanded to adding a second weight room uh, for our athletes on campus. Um, and so they've done a wonderful job. And again, when you come um, to a place like Muhlenberg or any college for that matter, uh, you spend as much time in the weight room as you do on the football field. Uh, and so to have uh, the equipment that you need, to have the coaches that you need in the weight room uh, and have those facilities, we've got an indoor facility with a field house. Uh, and so we can get a lot of practices done should there be uh, bad weather. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we do feel like we have everything in place to be successful. You know, what, one uh, question popped into my head, playing in, you know, the Centennial Conference, talk about the level of competition, Coach, over the years, you know, how much, you know, I mean, it's, you know, improved and just in terms of, I mean, that, you know, every week, you know, you're tested, it's a battle, you know, I said it, nothing is, you know, given, just talk about, you know, just because that raises the bar as well and, you know, elevates your program too. For sure. Uh, again, you can see in our record, uh, in the other conference champions records, when we get to the playoffs, uh, the Centennial Conference champion does very, very well. And it's not just in football, it's in all of our sports mm -hmm. um, as well. And so you can see in some of those first and second round games that Muhlenberg has had in our competition, uh, who's won the conference uh, as well. Uh, again, we're winning in those first round games rather easily. And you see Last week, we, we had a great game against our sinus. Uh, mm -hmm. And in years past, we've had battles uh, with many teams in the Centennial Conference. And you see in the playoffs, we're, we're battle tested. Um, and, and that's really been uh, a strength of ours uh, from top mm -hmm. to bottom. Uh, it's really good. I think we're 16 and six right now in non-conference games uh, as an entire uh, group. And so you can see from top to bottom, um, the Centennial Conference is a, an elite football league. I know that uh, you were started out as an offensive coordinator at Muhlenberg College, then, you know, elevated to head coach. Uh, 2018 was your first year. When you look back at where you started, coach, you know, back in 2018 and now here in 2023, could you envision, you know, I said the program, you know, being, you know, at this point, at this juncture, you know, just again, uh, having, you know, I said, uh, enjoying, you know, I said uh, all these wins and, I said uh, that historic season a couple of years ago, I think winning 13 games, uh, it's got to it's got to be very rewarding for you, coach. I think when you're saying what can we envision, what can we dream? Yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm a glass half full kind of guy. <laughs> uh, and so uh, I don't dream about losses and uh, I, yeah. I dream about championships. Um, yeah. And we got to work really hard to make those things happen. 
Yeah. Could I envision it? Yeah. Um, I think realistically, uh, ha have we um, met some goals maybe a little bit sooner than we thought? Probably. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, for, for us, we're always going to have that vision. Uh, we're always going to try to compete for championships. And then more importantly, we're going to have to work really hard for that. Yeah. Uh, it's been a great ride. Uh, I think I've learned a lot uh, along the way. Uh, I think we've uh, tried to transition through the pandemic with our student athletes. Um, mm -hmm. And they're always going to be the, the, the thing that we focus on more than anything. Uh, we can yeah. we can put up slogans and we can put up pictures, um, but we need to focus on our student athletes and yeah. and how to make them believe that they can accomplish anything. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that, well said. Um, hey, I, you've been, you've coached, you've played football for a long time, uh, Coach Millen. Uh, I'm wondering, you know, what, uh, what makes uh, football so special? I mean, you know, just, you know, in terms now of coaching, you know, the, the tangibles that really stand out to you. And obviously, you know, I said you have a true passion, desire, you know, for the game. Um, what is it about it? I mean, just some of the things, whether it's on the field, off the field that, you know, that you really take yeah. a, a lot of value in it, just like, you know, yeah. about. I, I think it, um, for me, it has always kind of been uh, my center. Uh, and I know that may sound a little bit odd for a football coach mm -hmm. to say that. Mm -hmm. um, but when I've needed, uh, personally, when I've needed something to pick me up, uh, football has been there. Uh, and maybe when I've, I've not been humble, uh, I think football has humbled me. Uh, as well in in a lot of different ways, professionally, athletically, um, uh, personally, uh, as well. Um, and that takes a little bit of time and a little bit of reflection uh, to maybe see that. You don't understand it in the moment. Um, but it, it, it's always been something that allows you to refocus uh, as well. Uh, you don't get bored uh, coaching football. So I think some people... They go into their jobs and they go, hey, I don't know what we're <laughs> going to do today or I don't like yeah. this. Uh, I don't think there's anything I don't like. Uh, we, mm -hmm. we start in our season and then we go to recruiting season and then we kind of have professional development and we do alumni relations. And then the summer is kind of its own beast with recruiting and preparation for camp. And so there's a natural cycle each and every single year. And so it's not like you're doing the same job over and over and over again every single day. Uh, mm -hmm. maybe after 14, 15, 16 weeks, you are absolutely burned out uh, from long hours uh, in the season. Uh, and then you have the opportunity to go on the road. Um, and meeting with recruits, I think, mm -hmm. is really, really rewarding. Um, you see uh, a, a student athlete in their high school who all they want to do is play college football. Um, and that gets you excited as a, yeah. as a coach, as a person, as a human. You see this, this 17 or 18 year old and they've worked really hard to see their dreams come true. And you get a parent on their visit and they say, wow, this is this is where we're going to go to college. And that's super exciting and super rewarding. Um, and then to see these 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 student athletes develop uh, as well. Uh, we've had uh, a young man, uh, J.P. Nye, um, who's our uh, tight end and, and playing really, really great football right now. Uh, we joke with him that he was uh, like 175 pound quarterback. Uh, when he showed up four years ago, and now he's a 230-pound a tight end um, who's one of the best in the country. Uh, and so to see him go from uh, a young man who, who had played quarterback his whole life and now being uh, a, probably a candidate for All-American at tight end and, and how he's grown, he's on our track and field program uh, as well. You see a young man like that really grow up in front of your eyes. Yeah. Um, and, and that's really rewarding as well. Uh, you yeah. see a young man maybe struggle in the classroom as a freshman and go on to get a degree in four years and get a meaningful job. Um, you get invited to a couple of weddings uh, from these players. And, and so you feel like you've had an impact on, on people's lives. Um, and yeah. so I think it reflects life. There's ups and there's downs in football, just like there's ups and downs in life. Um, and, and so it can teach you some valuable lessons. Uh, and then professionally, as I mentioned, it, it never gets boring. There, there's always something new to learn, um, and there's always kind of an ebb and flow to the seasons of football. Yeah, it's a true brotherhood. Life lessons to be learned, and you know, just because uh, not everyone is going to play, you know, football. I said after you know college, and you know, they're going to be you know heading into new jobs. And yeah, I, I agree. I, just to see that progression, you know, up the you know uh, you know from where they start as a freshman to all the way you know to being a senior, and you have 
some you know guys who are graduates as graduate students as well that that that's just a you know again amazing uh to you know to hear out coach you, you know how much of a sacrifice it is you know being a head coach uh you know it's 24 7 365 you talked about the grind i mean you know, get burnt out and, but and i know that um your family means so much uh to you i know we talked about it two years ago so when your wife you have two sons uh what have they meant to you here, you know, said, and just continue, you know, to support you, you know, said, uh, through being uh, the head football coach at uh, Muhlenberg College? Yeah, football coaching is, is uh, it's not a career, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. And I think that's in general, <laughs> um, to your point, all of a sudden, yeah. the phone rings at dinner, and, uh, and you see it's one of your top recruits, and <laughs> your wife and your family and everybody goes, oh, man, uh, what's gonna happen? And you try, you try to hit uh, uh, do not disturb on most of those. Um, <laughs> but if it's somebody you've been trying to get in touch with, um, yeah. they certainly understand. Um, and then, uh, so, so Kristen, my wife works on campus now, uh, and she works mm -hmm. in student life. And so that's been uh, a really positive experience for her to get yeah. on campus here and be back around, uh, college, uh, college students. Uh, and then my boys, Matthew and Nicholas are 10 and seven. Mm -hmm. Now they're both playing football. Um, and they were at almost every single uh, preseason practice. Uh, Matthew helps out. And Nicholas is just there for the free lunch. Um, <laughs> but to have uh, our players around and, and to have them be role models uh, for my young men, uh, yeah. I think is, is great. Um, and so we try to make as many practices and games uh, as we can. Um, but I think uh, my family certainly understands the, the responsibilities uh, of being the head football coach. Yeah, it's superb to hear. Um, hey, uh, Coach, uh, I want to give you the final word and message here, you know, for uh, family, you know, friends, uh, players and coaches uh, on the Muhlenberg College, the Mules football team, administration, athletics, uh, and then uh, the fan base and community of Allentown, Pennsylvania. I know there are a lot of people you probably want to thank and then just final word, you know, I said again for that, uh, that fan base out there uh, for the football team. Yeah, we, we truly try to have an attitude of gratitude here. Uh, and I think that starts uh, from the top with me. Uh, it is no, um, uh, it's not lost on me that this is a great responsibility. Uh, and there are a lot of people who would want to be in my shoes. And so we have to work really hard and uh, understand what a great place uh, that Muhlenberg College is. And it really is uh, from an academic standpoint, from an athletic standpoint, from a social standpoint. Um, this place is is what we'd like to say. It's one of one. Um, and, and it's really, really unique, um, for us there. Um, and, and so I think that that's, um, uh, we have an attitude of gratitude. We appreciate everything that, that we've earned here uh, at Muhlenberg college from our players to our coaches. Um, and, and it really is a wonderful time. We appreciate you having me on here. Thank you, Coach. Uh, incredible honor and privilege again. Uh, and, you know, again, congrats on the early success here in the 2023 season. And wishing you, you and the rest of the football team all the best uh, the rest of the way as well. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.